Good morning and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is Photoshop Elements Weekly, episode number 18. Last week we created some gradients. Now this week I thought we would have a little bit of fun with those gradients and I'll show you a great way to put those to use. Also, we're going to talk about creating a banner for any occasion, either your website or maybe the top of a Word per or a uh, Microsoft Office uh, document or wherever you may need a banner. And then I thought we would talk a little bit about ISO, how to set ISO, what does that mean, and its effect on overall light. So let's go ahead and get started here with Photoshop Elements, uh, Photoshop Elements Weekly, episode number 18. Okay, very good, uh, folks. Thanks to everybody for stopping in this week and joining us here for Photoshop Elements Weekly for another session of photo editing. I can tell you this week to try to get away from try to get away from that um, that buffering and everything or that that hangout we had last week what I thought I would do was upgrade the RAM on my iMac the iMac is the computer you see you can see the uh, profile of it here uh, I guess it'd be to your right uh, of the screen uh, it's actually sitting uh, right over here so we'll point to it there you go um, actually that was running four gigabytes of RAM uh, I upgraded it to 12 gigabytes of RAM thinking Maybe that will help the overall processes of it and be able to uh, pump that out there to you guys so you can not have to experience any delays or buffering. So that's that's the ticket here. The uh, We're trying something different this week with the laptop in front of me. Uh, this laptop, I'm actually controlling everything here. All the screens are being controlled just by this laptop. I can move my mouse across all the monitors. And what I wanted to do was I'm going to do the photo editing on the laptop and we're going to uh, discuss it and that way I can use this frontal camera that I have right here uh, sitting in front of me um, and we'll see how it goes we'll, we'll uh, check this out and then I'll check the recording after the show and see what happens here but uh, one thing is kind of odd I got two different uh, clocks or two different times going on with uh, the laptop compared to the iMac there so but that's neither here nor there we also are taking phone calls again this week right here you can either Skype me at Jack's Tech Corner, or you can call with your cell phone to 724-701-0911. Love to hear from you, and if you want to call in, it makes the shows even better. So, the first thing I told you we're going to work on this week, uh, we're going to get right into it, is gradients. And we created that nice gradient last week um, based on actually Jessica um, asked me uh, she's actually on vacation this week with her family so she won't be on the cast but she actually asked me how to actually create a gradient so we did that last week in the show so this week what we're going to talk about is we're going to create a fun effect using that gradient that we created last week and I was playing around with this yesterday and I thought this is pretty cool so I think I thought I would share it with you guys and uh, show you what I came up with so let me uh, get back over here and uh, now we will bring up the uh, Photoshop elements here and what we're going to work on here is this picture this is a picture that I took um, a couple years ago I guess we were in a local um, greenhouse I guess a, a greenhouse or uh, planetarium maybe they call these I'm not sure uh, this is one of those weekend trips you know where your wife says hey let's go uh, to this uh, whatever and I said that's great so what I always do is I just throw the camera on my shoulder and I don't care I'll go wherever she wants to go but this is actually um, glass this is actually blown glass from an artist that was put within the plants that's where this picture came from now what I thought I would do with this picture is I thought that I would go ahead and use that gradient that we created last week to give it a different effect 
And I'm going to show you how we can play around a little bit with that effect even to make it more interesting. So here's what we're going to do with this effect. We have it here. First thing we have to do is create a duplicate of our background image. And there's our duplicate. Let me see here. So that's our duplicate of our image right there. Now that we have that duplicate in that layers panel, what we have to add is, uh, you're not going to be able to see it with my picture in picture here. Let me get rid of that because, sorry about that. What we're going to add here is if we go down here and click on uh, create a new fill or adjustment layer, we are going to create a gradient map on top of that layer. And when you go to create this gradient map, you're going to have a lot of different um, settings that we're going to look at that we can do a lot of different effects with this particular picture. And I thought it made it look very, very interesting. And um, I think you'll be um, interested in it to use this with your pictures because then you can actually take your, your photos and make them more of a, what do I always say, conversation piece. That's correct. So here's our gradient, and we are currently using this blue over blue. Now, if you click this pull-down menu, you get all your gradients. I suggest going through each one and trying them out and seeing what you come up with. Let's try each one out there. And you can see already the different effects it has. I mean, this is really easy to do, and it puts a really nice effect on your pictures. And basically, all we're doing at the top there, if you look, we're actually just creating a layer mask if you look right up here, we're creating a layer mask called gradient map is what we're working with. And we'll just go through and look at each one of these. Nice and easy. The one I created was the red to blue is what I created. So that's the one we're going to use because as I said, you created a gradient last week. So with that gradient created, we're going to go ahead and use that gradient uh, this week to have a little bit of fun. I'll close that out. Now what I want you to do is if you go up to where it says set the blending mode for the layer right at the top above the gradient map layer and it's highlighted click the pull down menu and we can try each one of these and see what it does how it affects the picture and as you blend as that layers blending together what's happening is it's blending it in different ways with different um, settings in there to actually make a different effect on your picture that's what's happening and as you can see with each one it's a little bit different there we go i kind of like to come straight down here and start with these overlays uh, soft light you can see how really nice it makes it hard light vivid and we looked at these before using just standard uh, overlays or standard colors. There's a hard mix. Now there's one there I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. I like the way that is that affects the overall picture. Um, I think it makes it a really nice conversation piece. So I thought, well, I'll stick with that. And then I thought, what can we do to make it even more interesting? Or what can we do with our picture to change it up a little bit. If you click on the layer mask, the little white box there, the layer mask, and you grab a brush and you start painting. Remember when you paint with black, which that's what's down here in our layer palette is black. Black will reveal what's underneath that mask. Right now that mask, we have all this different color on top of that mask. So we're going to take that color off and when we take that color off. We're going to actually show what's under the color. And we've worked on this before when we investigated layer masks. And what I want to do here is I'm just kind of coming around here just to uh, open the window up is what I thought I would do just to play around, see what would happen. Okay. 
And I thought I would do it like this. And I thought, wow, that made even a more interesting picture. The, the thing I'm trying to talk to you or tell you here to do is never take a picture and just say, it's good enough. We, we enjoy it. It's perfect. And uh, we'll leave it go at that. Play around a little bit and try different things. It does make it more interesting. And uh, I think you'll have a lot more fun with your pictures themselves. Just like that. So now if we looked at another one, here's a different one I did earlier. It was this bird in a tree. And I thought, well, that's okay. You know, that looks fine. The bird in the tree, there's a lot of color in there. Uh, it looks very interesting. So I thought I would go ahead and do something else with that bird. So again, I thought I would just highlight the layer mask. I have my brush, but I'm going to lower it down just a little bit, just so I can try to get the bird in here. And I'm just going to start painting the bird. Because like I said, it's never quite good enough for me. And I think that's why my wife hates when I do photography work is... Um, she, uh, you know, always says, well, it's never good enough. And I said, no, it's not. Not when you're editing. It's not good enough. But I thought this would take the bird and pull the bird back out, even though the color is in there. And this just, again, shows you the power of being able to edit this. And there you go. So now you can see where that bird actually really stands out. Even though we have that gradient map laid on top of that picture, we were able to bring the bird back out. And I thought there's a lot of other ways you can use this. The other ways you can actually use this stuff is uh, portraits. You can actually uh, slap a background down with the gradient map. Change your background up a little bit and then you can actually... Um, you can actually um, clean up the, the person itself, right? So you wouldn't have that person as a, you wouldn't have that person as um, gradient, right? You don't want a person or a portrait being mapped over or gradient mapped there. So that is what you would do with that. So that is how you would use a gradient map to actually increase uh, your overall pictures and do something interesting with your pictures. You'd use a gradient map, and that is what you would do uh, for that. So again, if you did have any questions, now is a great time to get a hold of me here at uh, Jack's Tech Corner. You can Skype in if you have Skype loaded up on your computer, and just Skype to Jack's Tech Corner. Or pick up that cell phone and call me at 7 two four seven oh one oh nine one one love to hear from you this morning uh, your questions always makes the show more interesting and uh, I don't mind helping anybody out with if you have a question about photography and uh, we can definitely discuss that and talk that over also I want to tell you folks um, this week we did actually uh, pick up another contract um, I'm still doing wedding photography, so I did pick up a contract, which I have to get out today. Um, contracts are a big deal to me. You know, you got to get that contract signed uh, to secure a date. Um, so I do uh, some, and I don't know how many of you know knew that out there. A lot of people that know me say, Jack, we never knew you did wedding photography. We do when they come in, uh, and as I say, we, myself and my wife, as they come in, um, uh, we do pick up some, some weddings here and there, but uh, I don't really advertise it anymore. Um, I, I don't mind doing them, but, um, you know, it, it's a part that helps you. Uh, if you do any professional photography work, it... Good morning, this is Jack. Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. Who's this? This is Vicki. Hi, Vicki. How are I you? I was having a... Good. I was having a little trouble with the gradient. I'm still on eight, and I couldn't get the black and white gradient to come up so I could take a 
a picture of the sky and put a back, different background in with a picture behind it. Uh, could mm -hmm. you show quickly how to make up the black and white gray or the clear gradient and then so it will go into the, mix, uh, the picture on top? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, hold on here. Let me just switch back over to my uh, my computer and we will uh, show you that. So, we want to create a new gradient. So if you click on the gradient on the bottom, you just go to edit. And this should are you on you're on a uh, Windows, is that correct, Vicky? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, so you should be using the same thing here. So on here, you're going to actually create you want a you want a black to transparent, is that how you want it? Yes. Okay, so on here, you would just simply start out by creating a new one. Well, that's not actually where we wanted it. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of that. Delete that one. This one, actually, we are going to call black to trance. Okay. Okay. So there's our black to transparent. So when to make this work, you have to create black on the top and transparent on the bottom. So I'm going to first of all take these colors and take them out of here. And all I'm doing is if you click on it and you just hit your delete key on your keyboard. All right. And that will get rid of it. On the bottom one is your solid color. So if you see that pink right there on the bottom, yeah, it's please. called a color stop. Double click that, and we're going to make that black. So there's our black already right there. Okay. Okay. The opacity here, if you click on the top one, this very top one is the opacity stop. So your opacity stop you want that set to 100 on this side because that is what tells it either it's going to be transparent or it's going to have the full color and obviously you want it to be full black so the transparency would be 100 on, right. okay on the on the far right side if you double click this should be white which it's already set to white click OK and the transparency or the opacity you can actually take that down. So if you take that down, you can see now where it's transparent down through the whole bar there. It may be coming out white on the video, but if you look at it and you move that opacity down, I'd move it down to zero. It's going to make it fully transparent. And then okay. that, w then you would just go ahead and rename it um, black to trans or whatever you want to call it really. And then click on new and then it sets it in right there. So now it's inside there, and now we can use that. And then you're wanting to use it, so if you hold your shift key down your picture and you go from top to bottom, now you can see the black. Or if you're saying the sky, if you want to change the sky mm -hmm. color, maybe that part of the sky you want to um, be blue instead. And I think mm -hmm. I made one. Yeah. I, I made one here, actually, where it's blue. Uh, the foreground is blue um, to transparent so if I click this pull down menu I could choose that one and it's actually wanting to be the same one here hold on now. what happened to it yeah, let's just double click this and make it blue or bluer okay Now if I go from top to bottom, you'll see where it's a little bit more blue. But you want to make this... Well, I guess. Now you can see where it actually changed it to blue. But being that bottom is transparent, it doesn't affect the bottom of the picture. So you're right. To do a sky, that would be a great way to do it. Okay. Did that help you out, Vicki? Yes, it did. I was struggling with that this week. Okay. Hey, don't struggle too much through the week. You can email me too. Drop me an email. Let me know what you're struggling with. Okay. Oh, that looks nice.
Okay. Well, thanks for calling in, Vicki, hey, and thanks for I watching. also had a second question. Oh, okay, good, go On ahead. wedding pictures, is there any site that you can go on for different poses? Um, I may have to get back to you on that one. I actually have my, uh, my stepdaughter is actually going out for the first time instead of my wife with me on this next wedding, and um, she's going to actually be my poser, so she's looking for tons of resources. And I think as we find those, what I'll do is I'll put them up on the um, I'll put them up on the website, and uh, or maybe I'll do a short YouTube video or something on on um, websites. But you know, we usually just go to Google. We go to Google and we just type in wedding photography, and just start scrolling through there. Another good site is um, actually one of our sponsors we picked up this week is Flickr. Are you on Flickr? Yes, I just got on there. Okay, good. And I think I don't know if you, if I got you as a contact getter or not on there because we keep a you know a nice group of people together. But um, I use Flickr also, and on Flickr you can actually type in weddings or wedding photography, and you'll get a bunch of ideas just from other people's works. Do you have a wedding coming up, Vicky? Yep. Do I have what? Who's are you contracted for it? No, I'm just my daughter's getting married and I was going to take some pictures and I just wanted some idea. Oh, that's great. That's great. But that's the way, um, that's actually where I started in wedding photography was my, um, uh, my wife's brother, or I guess my brother-in-law, easier to say it that way. He was getting married and they said, Hey, we know you like photography. You want to do a wedding? And I said, wow, I really didn't. <laughs> it's kind of scary, Vicki, and you're going to be kind of scared too, but just take your time. The biggest thing I could tell you about, the biggest thing to pay attention to is lighting. Uh, it seems like those first couple weddings, you come back and every picture is dark. Are you going to be doing the formal pictures at the church also? Well, she's got someone else that's helping out, but between the two of us, we're just trying to figure out how to do this. Okay, here's my second tip for you in my wedding tips of knowledge that I have any. I don't know, but I've done a few. Another tip is when you, okay. you use a tripod when you're doing your formals, if you're in a church. And here's, okay. the, here's the real trick, Vicki, is watch whatever's in front of the camera. In other words, what I said is we came back from that first wedding and started looking through them in the editor. And I had to clone stamp out a lot of people. Tell everybody that is not in the picture that they must be behind your tripod. So, in other words, they can be in the pews anywhere behind the tripod if they're waiting to get their picture taken, but they can't be sitting front row and looking because you're going to end up with a lot of heads in the picture that you didn't want. Okay. That's, that makes sense. Yeah, that's my knowledge. That's that's the little bit of knowledge I have for you. But the other one is lighting. Lighting I is... Even, say it again? Okay. Oh, uh, I didn't even think about the tripod. Yeah. That pick, would make things a lot easier. Oh, yeah. Pick yourself and up And then the lighting is... Lighting is right behind you. Um, the lighting itself, we use flash. Uh, we took some studio lighting with me one time, and my wife said never do that again because you have very little bit of time. You, you've attended a lot of weddings in your life, but what happens is normally your group of people in the audience get in their cars and they head off to the reception hall. They go to the reception hall, and they're ready to do what? They're ready to eat and drink. That's what they're there for at that point. They, they want to celebrate. You can't, right. you can't, and as a photographer, you have to be ahead of the wedding party. So we spent so much time at the church breaking down our studio lighting that it just didn't work. Um, and my wife told me that day is we're never carrying studio lighting again um, because it takes too much time to break it down. So just use, you have flash, you have a, um, a flash for your camera? Yes. Now, do you, is it the flash built into the camera yeah it is built in okay yes there is one thing you might want to look at it's called i think it's called a puff it's a p-u-f-f -F. Um, and it attaches to the top of the flash itself and what it does it softens the light um, because if not you're going to have a lot of work when you come home dealing with red eye so just a thought these are just thoughts for you i'm not telling you not to do it by all means do it do the wedding um, but I'm just giving you some pointers that I've ran across in my time of doing them. Okay. Um, now, uh, she's doing the wedding itself to the um, uh, out in the yard where there's flowers and that type of thing in the background. Okay. Do we make sure that the sun is behind us, if I remember right? 
Correct. The sun should be behind you, and it should be lighting them up. So that's that's a trick. Um, and actually, I don't okay. know, I don't know if I have it. Um, yeah, I do. Hold on one second. Um, let me grab this. I got so much stuff in here. It's crazy sometimes. Okay. Anyway, what this is, do you, do you recognize this thing by any chance? Let me pull it up here. For I'm me. not seeing anything right now. <laughs> what this is, it's a refle reflective sun device that you put in your car window. And I picked this oh, up. Oh, yeah, I've got one of those. Okay, yeah, if it's silver and if it's white on this side. Okay, what, yep. I, what I use this for, instead of spending 30 or $40 from a photo store for reflective material, you can use this as a reflectant yep. when you're doing outside weddings. Hold it down below them. Use the white side then? or Yeah, use the, the white silver. side. Use the white side. If you use the silver side, it's going to cast a silver coloring on them from the sunlight. Okay. So it's a very, very cheap. I think I paid $4 for this. My wife said, why are you buying that? We don't use those. I said, uh, for photography. So, but it works yeah, very well. Yeah, I think well. I've got one in my car, but maybe a new one would be better. Yeah, just pick yourself up a new one for about three or four bucks. But I have somebody hold it down out of the shot when you're taking, especially facial shots. And it gives okay. you, it gives you really nice sun reflection up to their face. <laughs> so that way they're not, there's no shadows. Why do you hold that like at the waist? You could hold, you, higher yeah. than that. You could hold it at the waist if you're taking from the waist up. Just remember where you're taking a shot from. It doesn't work that okay. great. It doesn't work at all like for them to stand on it. It doesn't reflect enough light. But if you're doing a facial shot oh. like this, you know, so if you're doing yeah. a nice facial shot. And uh, <clears throat> so, and I don't know where I came up with that tip or that trick at or that idea, but you know, it's, you spend so much money on the hobby itself, and you try to find um, inexpensive ways to get by without spending all that money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that could be cropped out later. Yeah, you could crop it out if you get it in your shot, but try not to. You should be able to compose and do your um, composition and get this out of your shot altogether. Um, okay. What kind of camera are you using, Vicky? <coughs> It's a point and shoot, is what I've got. Okay, is it it's a, just a smaller camera? Um, I'm not even sure what the name of it is. Samuel, I think it says on there. Okay. How many megapixels is it? I do remember you, right. Do you know how many megapixels? Uh, I think there's 12. Oh, 12 you're, is, you're yeah, good. Yeah, I think it's 12. You're good then. I always ask that because okay. people that talk about cropping, um, the thing about cropping is you start to lose megapixels. But if it's 12, you have plenty of room. Uh, the next pointer is <coughs> all point and shoot cameras have what's called a digital zoom. Uh, look in your menus or in your little manual there and uh, make sure you turn it off because all digital zoom okay. does, anything a digital zoom does is crops the picture. So you lose something and you come back to the editor and you're like, now I know I didn't cut her gown off there, but when you zoomed up, the digital cropping may just cut her gown off or something. Um, so I teach in my classes, I always teach, move your feet before you move the lens. It, it's easier to walk up and get a nice tight close up shot. Um, and when you're doing a wedding, you have to be, you have to get nice close-ups without being intrusive. Um, you know, because I always say, I'm, I'm not the one wearing the gown. Well, thank God, but you know what I mean? People are there to see the bride. Yeah. So you don't want to get in between the bride and, and the audience because they're there to see the bride and witness this, uh, this great occasion. Okay. Okay. So is that good, Vicki? You got that now? Yeah, I do. Those, 
some of those videos that you put out before that I really I've been going back and looking at them and that's helped too. Oh, that's good. And if you want to, Vicky, you know how to use the camera. And if you want to, I have a list of standard poses that I use or standard pictures over on the wedding. Like uh, we've done it for a while, so we have standard shots, <coughs> such as like make sure you get the wedding cake, the invitation. Uh, the, the place settings for dinner, um, flower arrangements, the cookie trays. We have certain shots that we always do that I have a list. And if you send me your email address, I probably have it somewhere, but send it to me again, and I'll gladly email you that list, and you, oh. you guys will have it. All right. And yours is uh, Jack's Corner email or Gmail? Yeah, Jack's Tech Corner at gmail.com okay. okay and I'll, all right well thank you so much and i'll gladly help you out. okay all right well i'll have, do that then thank you much hey vicky thanks for calling in it's always really nice to talk to you okay bye now bye bye <coughs> sorry about that <laughs> The coughing, anyway, not about the call. I love getting your calls in here, guys. Call in. Um, <laughs> uh, Dan, Jack, you're the wizard. I don't know, Dan. I don't know about what that wizard is. Uh, let's see. I'm just going back through the chat room here. Just grab this other call. Hey, good morning. This is Jack with Jack's Tech Corner. Who am I talking to? Hi, this is Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? I can't complain too much. It's a nice hot day around good. here. Yeah. I have a camera question. Okay. Um, I'm wanting to pick up a couple ND filters because I want to uh, take a couple shots of some waterfalls. Okay. But my question is, um, I'm confused. Does it need to be... I got the Nikon D7000 and... I, I'm confused. Does the filter need to be digital for digital cameras, or is that going to matter? No, that won't matter. Um, I'm that just won't matter? The, the trick is with your filter is make sure um, that it you have the D7000. The D7000, yeah. Uh, you're a lucky person. That's the camera I was going for. My, <laughs> my wife said, no more buying. Um, so, so oh. and, and I don't know. You're, you might, are you a wife? Pardon me? Are you a wife? Are you married? Am I a wife? Are you married? Uh, no, not right now. I'm not. Okay, well, okay, well, not right now, but it, later on, you're gonna know. You hopefully you have a husband that when you say don't buy it, he won't buy it. So and I, I didn't buy it. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, what I'm saying. It's I a nice camera, Jack. It's nice. I like it. Oh, thanks for rubbing <laughs> it in. You know. <laughs> hey, Cheryl, you're a real friend to the show. Thanks for rubbing it in. It hurts a little bit. It's painful. <laughs> Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's digital then, <laughs> no, by what you're saying. No, it doesn't matter at all. I mean, the the trick is, I'm just looking at the D7000. Do you have it with the stock lens? Uh, no, I have the um, I have a 50 millimeter, and then I have the 18 to 200. Hold on, man. I'm just looking it up here. Okay, let me take a peek here. D7000 for Nikon. Uh, it's funny. It says right on this page right here. It says. It's the camera that Cheryl will own that Jack will never have. That, that's what it says. Around the, I, how did they know that? It says it around the webpage, Cheryl. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's funny. You guys calling in, it's great. I, I love you guys calling in here. I'm just looking at the lens it comes with. Um, I, I bought the body separate, and then I just bought two lenses to go with it. Uh, okay, I got you. I got you. Did you ever buy filters before? No, I haven't. Okay, hold on. I've been him hauling around because I don't know. Uh, you read one thing and then you read something else. It should be digital with a digital camera or you're going to get lens flare. And I don't know what to do. Yeah, but the trick is the D7000 is more of a... It's, it is digital, but you have to look that it's the high-end DSLR camera. So it's also... It's the latest, greatest in DSLRs. Or SLR, if you look at it, single lens lens reflex. So... Okay. But let me grab my camera. Hold on. You guys got me running across the room here, but hold on. Let me grab that for a second.
Okay. Okay, you still there? Yep. Okay, very good. Get back in my position here. Okay, so on your camera, this happens not mm -hmm. the D7000. This is the D90, which... No, it's not. It's the D80. Anyway. Uh, Jack. Yeah, I have knowledge, folks. I can't remember what camera I'm shooting with. That's a shame, huh? That's all right. On your camera itself, it should tell you what this lens part is here in the front. See right here in the mm -hmm. front? And I don't have a... I normally always keep a um, a clear filter on there just to protect the lens, but I don't have one on this camera. Um, but that's how you determine your filter size. This happens to be a, right. a 0.45 millimeter, so you would screw that on there. Um, and it's funny because, I mean... I'm like you guys sitting here. I've taken photography classes myself. And I can't remember the filter that they told us that we should buy. Uh, what kind of filters are you looking at first? Can you tell me that? I want to get a couple ND filters because I want to take some waterfall shots. And I want to, you know, try to block some of the light to get a slow shutter speed. Yes. Um, to get that flowing water look instead of the freezing action. Yeah, so they would do that. The natural densities will do that. Um, uh, yeah, the, I want to, and and I just wasn't sure whether to get the digital or the non-digital. The digital ones are more expensive. I'm looking at the Hoya um, HSM version, and then they have the Pro One, which is digital, which is more expensive. So, but you're saying that doesn't matter. I can now, get the non-digital ones. Where are you looking at those at? What are you looking uh, at? The actually, website? it's a website. Okay, what website is that? Oh, right offhand. Let me look. Oh, right offhand. I can't remember. All right, that's all right. It was a pretty good deal. It was a couple. It was uh, a set of three. Um, the HSM was uh, two, the four, and the six, I believe. And it was like $99. And that was, I couldn't find it anywhere cheaper than that. Um, even on eBay, they wanted like 150 bucks for that set. Yeah, I'm just looking here the difference. Um, natural density, solid, gradient, natural densities, or center. Do you know which kind you're buying? Is it a solid or is it a density filter? It's a neutral density neutral filter. Density. Um, I believe the graduated, graduated density filters are the ones that turn. Yeah, they are. Um... Hold on. I'm going to try to bring this uh, other computer back up here. Uh, there we go. I mean, I know I want to get a neutral density filter. My only question was, is it important for it to be digital for your digital camera? Is that going to matter? No, that's not going to matter. I would say if it was a straight, if you had one of the like, pocket digital cameras or something, or they call them a hybrid digital camera, maybe. Uh, did you ever see those? Like the Kodak has those, Nikon has them. Um the, yeah. They're point and shoot, but the lens doesn't come off. I think that kind of, that's more of what they're thinking digital. But when, okay. you're, when you're thinking interchangeable lenses, you have an S, by all means, you have an SLR camera. Um, like this one here. These are professional end SLR cameras. Um, okay. And, um, and you have the Cadillac of cameras at this point, the D7000. It's a pretty amazing camera. Did you shoot any uh, video off of that camera yet? No, I haven't. I haven't even touched that yet. Oh, you yeah, okay. So the video is supposed to, it's supposed to be really amazing. Um I've been doing videos for YouTube lately, um believe it or not, um with my iPhone. So the camcorders have been sitting on the shelf and I've just been using my iPhone lately to do HD video and it works pretty well. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's nice to have a camcorder and a camera in your pocket. Um I do say that digital cameras are taking, I can't say taking away from photography because I think they're adding something. I was just reading an article this morning about how more and more pictures are showing up on Flickr from, um, from the iPhone or from the smartphones in general than what are showing up today from cameras. So that's an interesting fact. That is. So. I don't have an iPhone. Not yet, anyway. 
Yeah, but hey, I would say, you know, do you have a smartphone? Do you have a phone with a camera built no, in? No, I don't. No, no, just a basic texting phone. I mean, I don't have a smartphone at all, no. Okay. Yeah, well, it's something to think about. At least something in your phone with a camera. Um, because mm-hmm. people are doing interesting work with their with their cell phones with photography. So it's getting to be a very... Uh, I think people are getting into the photography hobby now, and they don't even know they're doing it. Right, you know, right. It's interesting. Um, but, of course, you have the cream of the crop with cameras. Do you do any professional shooting? No, uh-uh. just just uh, for myself. Just, for just play around. Well, hey, we uh, Vicki, we would love to see... Um, this is Cheryl. I'm sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> How did I get that messed up? I'm looking right at your name saying Vicki. I'm saying, oh, that's okay. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I do that. Uh, you know, that's okay. It's, it's getting older, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl. See, now. Well, thank if, you. Uh, I'll, I'll put this together. I'll say Cheryl D7000. Uh-huh. I'll always know your name now. So when you call, okay. I'll, just, I'll think D7000. I'll know who you are. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Well, thanks okay, for calling. Thank thanks you. for calling in. And hey, let us see some of your um, your waterfall shots. I'd love to see those. Okay, I'll do that. All right. Okay. Well, thanks. You have a great afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Very very good. Two great callers there. Um, if anybody else has any questions, throw them up here. I'm just going to uh, look over the chat room. Really, uh, just give it a quick scan here. See what's on the chat room. Uh, let's see. Uh, I did like Dan's idea. Um, Dan, you're right, Dan. Oh, sorry. Just coffee filters. Um, and and Dan, I did like it. Or Brian, I liked your comment. And I'm sorry. Uh, need to buy, need to get the camera for Mrs. Jack. That's the way to do it. Uh, Mrs. Jack does not do a whole lot of photography though. Um. She goes out with me, like I said, on weddings occasionally, and she does a lot of posing. She has done a lot of photography work at weddings. Um, I usually send her in with the uh, bride when they're getting ready, the bride, and the um, the bridesmaids because, you know, they feel more comfortable with a woman uh, as they're getting dressed than they do a male, which makes sense, and I don't have a problem with that. Uh, it's nice to have my wife there where she can go in and get she gets some uh, really, really nice shots. Uh, she does some nice mirror shots. What that is, you've probably seen millions of these. The bride stands in front of a mirror as they're get, putting on makeup or getting ready. And she takes a double shot behind her where she has the bride's back, but she has her face in the mirror. And it's a really wonderful shot. Um, it's a, one of those, I probably have about 10 shots at a wedding that I call the money shots. Uh, the shots that I found over the years that the bride and groom or the wedding party pays um, or, or buys a considerably more amount of pictures based on those 10 special shots. So that's really here. Okay, so looking at the time here, we're not going to do the banner thing. Uh, if you guys really, really want the banner, throw it in the chat room, but I think that could be a filler maybe for next week. Um, I do want to talk to you. I think it's very important to talk to you about, uh, especially with all these great questions about uh, great questions we just had here about waterfall pictures from Cheryl. <laughs> I got it right, Cheryl. Got it. And uh, the questions from, from Vicki, uh, who's going to be doing some wedding photography. It's good to understand a concept by the name of ISO or ISO. Even your digital point-and-shoot cameras will have this setting on it. And it's important to understand this setting and to know what it's actually used for. So, the setting itself is actually used to, anytime we want to allow more light into the lens without using a flash. Basically, you can use this ISO, sh- this ISO setting or ISO. You don't have to set your camera on any special settings. Uh, the only thing on point-and-shoot cameras I've learned over the years of teaching this in a classroom with other people's cameras is you have to be able to set the camera on manual. The camera has to be in manual mode to get to the settings itself because what happens on point-and-shoot cameras, if the camera is in automatic mode, what happens is the camera itself will not allow you to change settings because it's smart enough to say, wait, you have me in automatic mode. Now, why are you trying to mess with me? So 
in uh, any of the other modes on a 35 millimeter or the DSLRs, the program mode, shutter, aperture priority, or, or manual mode, you can set the ISO setting. Now there's some guidelines. Somebody asked me recently, I was doing some photography work and I don't know if I have that on here. I hate to talk about things with you guys and not be able to show you. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to bring it up here and show you this picture. Because people will ask me, Jack, what did you have the camera set on when you did that picture? And when I was learning even more, I mean, I learned and I learn photography every day too, folks. I don't think that I'm one of those type of people that I never can know enough. And I think that's what you guys are here for because you guys have some great talent. I've seen all your work and a lot of your work. But as, together as a community, we can learn from each other. And I always want to learn more stuff. I mean, I think that's really important. I'm just looking here where I put these shots at. And I will find them. I mean, this is off the, this is off the cuff here. So don't email me and say, Jack, you should be more ready. Because I've had those shots. Or I've had those things before. Okay, we're going to try to bring this up here. Yeah, about that one. We'll bring it up here. Okay, now people have asked me, how did you take these shots? What was your ISO setting? What was your uh, shutter speed? What was, um, you know, um, the white balance set at? And more times than not, there are some settings I do not play with. Um, one, not all the time, but I don't normally play with white balance. And we can do... Now, for you folks out there with 35 millimeters, um, maybe we'll do a segment and I'll talk to you about custom white balance. Um, it's a pain, but it equals amazing results. Okay, so I can tell you that. It is a pain, um, but the results are, are worth going through the pain. I've done custom white balance when I do portrait work, and it makes a big difference of color. Ordinarily, I leave white balance set on automatic. But we're talking about ISO settings today. The ISO settings on this particular shot, believe it or not, people said, wow, Jack, to get those lights and everything, you'd have to have the ISO setting at 800, 1600. No, believe it or not, the ISO settings of these particular shots I'm showing here is 100. Now, why is that? Why was it 100? Well, because I'm trying to do this type of a photography or this type of photography and I was trying to capture this type of a of a moment. If I would have cranked that ISO setting up to 400, 800, 1600, 2700, whatever your camera goes to. What happens is it would let so much light in that this would actually be almost like a daylight shot. Everything would be, uh, the lights would actually quadruple the amount of light available into this. So it would allow too much light in this shot. I didn't want that to happen. So my ISO setting on this particular shot was 100. And the shutter speed on this particular shot was in bulb mode. And we talked about that, if you remember a while back, we talked about that for fireworks. So now put these two together. Fireworks is a moving, streaming thing through the sky, and it blows up. The same kind of deal with speeding traffic. If you want to catch the speeding or the movement of the car without capturing the car this is the great way to do it that's where this shot came from um, so we're talking about ISO now if I can find some other pictures here um, trying to see uh, where these were I don't know exactly if I can't find I can tell you about it um, I'd rather show it to you though I thought for sure it was on here. I thought we used them before for a video. Yeah, we did. Right here. Um, we'll bring it. We'll use this one. Now, this is a shot here. Um, I believe we used this shot actually last week in a tutorial. But I teach my daughter how to shoot. I take her out and sh give her. She has her own point and shoot camera. She has a Nikon camera. And I teach her as well as my stepdaughters to shoot without using flash 
Now that's very important because with flash, if you can see these, these fish were not swimming in midair. These fish were actually swimming in an aquarium behind glass. We also um, seen at this particular zoo was monkeys, which are behind glass. And it kills me. It just kills me so much to see people standing there with their flash on. And they got these big strobes of flash going off in this glass. Big strobe of flash going off in this glass. And that really bothers me because I tell my wife all the time, can I please go over and help them? And she doesn't allow me. She won't allow me to do that. Um, she says, you always want to help the world. I said, if it's, some, if it's knowledge I have, I want to share it with everybody. And I love to tell people, you know, when you go home, that picture is going to be absolutely crap. Because you didn't adjust the ISO setting. Uh, and you shut your flash in there. But you know what they do? They leave the camera on automatic, right? And the camera goes, wow, it's dark. I need a flash. And it flashes. Um, so my daughter actually took this shot. She probably had the ISO, if I'm looking at this, probably about 400. Um, my daughter doesn't like to go much higher than 400. And um, I was thinking here, maybe I'll get her on a... Uh, I like to get her on one of these webcasts with me. And because she's been doing some very interesting work with some online websites uh, with photo editing. She makes some very interesting photos. And I may get her on to actually have her talk to you guys about how to do that. Um, because kids have a different perspective with photography today than what we have. Um, let's see if I got another shot here of this. Uh, no. No, I'm just going through to see. This bear, the bear you can see here, he was behind glass too, but it's outside in the daylight and people don't have a problem with that. Um, and usually, if, even if your camera's on automatic, your flash will not go off. Let's go back to those pictures again. But when you're in here, <clears throat> now remember, watch your ISO settings. And today's digital cameras are a lot better than most digital cameras have been. And what I mean by that is the, um, the digital cameras of today create less what we call noise. Um, and maybe I can come up with a couple of pictures with noise on. I'll post them on my Flickr. Maybe I'll put them up on Flickr there or something so you guys can see them. Um, we need to create, and I don't know if we have it yet, a Jack's Tech Corner Flickr group. Um, we need to create that group too. You know, we have the Facebook page, but and I know we all share pictures there. Uh, but if you post a Flickr anyway, maybe we can go ahead and do that. We can work with that and um, have a Flickr group so we can look at each other's pictures. But what happens is today you don't get as much noise introduced as you did in the prior cameras, the older cameras. Uh, what noise is, is is that graininess look. So that's what the noise would be. Okay. Let me uh, get back up on here in the other camera. And we do have the phone number back up. If you want to call in, you can gladly call in. What I wanted to do now, though, is we wanted to tell you about, uh, we talked a lot about Flickr, so now I wanted to tell you about Flickr and how I just recently picked them up to help sponsor the show. So, you know, all shows, and uh, I watch a lot of these uh, web shows, we all deal with um, issues. I mean, we all have e equipment to pick up or buy, so it helps. Um, anytime you uh, pick up a sponsor so I don't mean to get bombard you with advertisements but I'm just going to throw this out there for you <clears throat> so where do you store your pictures at on your computer what on your computer what happens if you have a catastrophe in your house something happens I've heard of people's water lines breaking um, uh, anything can happen in your house and all of a sudden your computer is no more it's gone where's all your memories gone with the computer now it's time to think of an online backup company that I've been using for years. It's Flickr.com. That's spelled F-L-I-C-K-R.com. With Flickr, you can begin with the free account, and then you can actually see the power of Flickr and how it's used, and then you can move up to the pro account. The pro account is going to set you back maybe $35 or $36 a year. I don't think it's all that much. I'm going to have to go back and check that. But it gives you unlimited ability to upload unlimited amount of pictures. 
and also now you can upload video. So if you'd like to sign up for Flickr and you don't yet have a Flickr account, even if you want the free account, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and look on the left side of the web page, scroll down until you see the little Flickr graphic, click on that, and sign up for your account today. I'd also like to thank Flickr for being a sponsor of this show. Okay, folks, so thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have any other questions, go ahead and give us a call there. Throw it in the chat room. I'll look at that there for a few more minutes to see what's going on. And it was really, really great today to have Vicki call in. You guys, you make the show. You make the show when you call me up. Vicki, thank you so much for uh, calling the show. And I, if you need any other um, pointers towards that wedding, by all means, I can definitely throw you some pointers out there. I have some, uh, always have great ideas for weddings, and we're always looking for more. So if you come up with any ideas, let me know. Because like I said, I have a wedding also booked now in September. So is our wedding. Also, we have a, uh, a trip coming up. We are uh, going on vacation here in a couple weeks. Uh, so there will be a show next week. But the week after that, we will not be doing a show because my wife told me I cannot do a show on vacation. Um, I know I did a show with you before on the road, but this one we will be out in the middle of the ocean on a uh, ship, and we're not going to have internet service. So unless I'm going to beam it up, Scotty, <laughs> I'm not going to get you a web show out there. Um, but I will take 100,000 pictures, I'm sure. I have a lot of great ideas for some pictures, and we'll share that with you when we get back, and we'll do some editing with those. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to tell you about? Um... I don't think so. Um, and Cheryl, man, I tell you what, Cheryl, email my wife and say, boy, this uh, D7000 is a fantastic camera, and I think you should allow Jack to buy one. Uh, I would love her to be able to pick, love her to come up and say, hey, why don't you go ahead and order that D7000? One of your viewers said you should have it. So that would be great. It'd be nice to have that. Um, and if you, if you guys do want to uh, join me here, I don't know when I'm going to be doing it, but if you see the, sh the, the, the channel come live, you've probably seen over the past week, I've been doing some audio checks and stuff. If you should see the channel come live, uh, check to see on Twitter or on your email and uh, see what the show is because I'm looking at doing um, either a technology news show this week with news, uh, the latest news. And I know there's a lot of those on the Internet, but uh, I'm looking to either do that um, or something else, whatever it may be, uh, some type of a computer. I was doing a show called Technoman, uh, which if you follow me on Twitter, you know that's kind of my Twitter handle. And Technoman was just basically that, teaching how to use your computer. And uh, not really teaching as much as class, more as uh, the call-ins and the questions like you did today. So, once again, thanks uh, to everybody for that. So we're going to go ahead and close this out. Uh, Roku, Justin TV channel. Okay, Dan, did you get a Roku box? I'm just looking in the chat room now. My head's turned uh, to the look. And look, I can bring this camera up too now. This is pretty cool. There you go. I can turn to the look. Bring it back up. And I can look at the, ch the, the computer over here, and I can say, uh, Dan, did you get a Roku box? Or is Dan saying, Jack, you need to get that commercial out there. I don't even know what to do with that one, actually. You've had it for several months now, Dan. Dan, are you watching the show on the Roku box? Are you watching this uh, this actual cast on the Roku box by any chance? No, okay, you're not. Yeah, the Justin TV channel is free on Roku. And since Dan asked about it, and I thought I would uh, bring this up for you, and basically, if you don't know what a Roku box is, it's R-O-K-U. The Roku box is really cool for watching these shows as well as a lot of other tech shows. And if you have a Netflix account, I use it a lot for Netflix. You can stream your Netflix movies right to your Roku box. The Roku box starts at about $59. And the top end one, which is a brand new model. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Roku for that. How often does that happen? I buy it. And three weeks later, they're like, 
hey, Jack, look, new model. Um, but if you want to look at the Roku or if you want to buy a Roku box, uh, check out my website, jackstechcorner.com. On the left, on the very top, there's a link that says Roku. Click on that. Check out their website. And then if you purchase, that helps the show. And you can also, there is a Justin TV channel that you can download onto the Roku box. And you can watch these shows as, as well as many, many other shows that uh, not just that I do, but many other people do on Justin TV. You can sit and relax in front of your TV set, have a cup of coffee, and watch the uh, Sunday show here with your cell phone in hand. So you can call and say, hello, Jack, I have a question. That's what I'm here for. I, I love these questions. It's great. It, uh, it makes it more interesting. I love the interaction with you folks to know you're out there watching. Okay, well, I am going to wrap it up. Once again, thanks to everybody for tuning in. And uh, I am really, really happy that... Um, I'm sorry, Dan, you could not find it. Um, Dan, we can talk there after the show. It's under news. I'm going to have to look where I found it, actually. So I will look into that, Dan, and see where I found that at. Okay, folks, once again... Thank you very, very much for watching Jack's Tech Corner. And I enjoy doing these shows, and, and I love having everybody come in here every week, and we're getting a nice crowd together uh, that we can hang out Sunday mornings and uh, be able to put our minds together, wrap it around photography a little bit, and try to understand the mysteries of editing. So until next week, as always, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon on Jack's Tech Corner 4 another Photoshop Elements Weekly. Bye for now, gang, and have a great Sunday and a good work week.